Hey, everybody. I was trying to catch the, uh, the host that ducks just threw, but I didn't make it. <laughs> Thanks for the host, ducks. Can you guys hear me okay? Duck says, can't stay long. Getting ready to head out. Wanted to say hi and drop a host, though. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm glad you stopped by. Oh, wow. That looks a lot more red on the screen than it does in real life. You guys can hear everything okay? Hear everything pretty good? Just trying to turn the music up a little bit so we're not... There we go. Alright, so thanks for coming. Um, today we are... We're doing the first... Good old color correction, yeah. And I forgot to white balance myself, but I figure I looked pretty good, so I just went ahead and went with it. So, but uh, I had a great weekend. I hope you guys did too. I went to the New Hampshire Veg Fest and gave the kombucha demonstration that I gave last year. Pretty much the same. I just had some more information to give people because I've had a whole year of experience making kombucha instead of just uh, a couple months. So I had these uh, for sale. They're kind of chrome keying out, but um, little little books on how to make kombucha. And uh, everybody was very interested and had a lot of great questions. I had a great time. I went with one of my friends um, who does Reiki energy work. Um, so I got stared at a lot because they were doing the, <laughs> the Reiki like right behind the table. Um, so that was fun. <laughs> but. Um, we had a great time. Uh, it was really nice talking to everybody, and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing the kombucha demonstration, or I might do something else, or just have a booth next year. I haven't decided, but it was great to do, and everybody uh, came by who came. Not everybody who came. Some people that had come last year came by the table and wanted to let me know that they still have their scobies, and they're still making kombucha, and it was fun. and. I was really happy to see that, you know, something that I gave them, they were still doing, and yeah, it was great. But, um, I actually applied, I sent a check in the mail with an application to do another vendor table in Connecticut in July. Um, so I'm excited to do that. It's going to be a much larger festival, and I don't know if we're going to do it yet, but they're also going to be doing flash tattoos that day. <laughs> So MVP and I might get tattoos of like little pig faces or little carrots or something. They have like a limited selection that you can choose from for the day um, that they do there. So it is exciting cables, I know. I've never gotten a tattoo. Uh, <laughs> how about mushrooms, Zeus asks. I didn't see any mushrooms on the legend that they posted. So they had like little little carrots in the shape of a V. And then they had like a little heart with a leaf on it and stuff like that. So they seemed really cute, really simple. I'm not sure how much they're going to cost, but Cable says my first one was on my foot. I bet that was painful. <laughs> I was hoping that they would have like an avocado or a dancing avocado or something. They don't seem to have those. Or they didn't post one in their pictures. We'll see what happens, but... Uh, yeah, so that one's called Compassion Fest. I already emailed them to see if they would be interested in having a table with my type of like content because basically what I'll be doing is just promoting the show and selling little ebooks or little books and stuff. Dancing Avocado Zeus, I know, right? Wouldn't that be a great tattoo to have? I think so. But anyway, uh, I haven't been like approved yet because I haven't got my money, but it would be July 21st. I think it's from 10 to 5, but I'll let you guys know. Cable says, you're likely looking around $100 to $150 plus range, depending on the size, from your own experience. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm ex expecting. I, f I really wanted to get a tattoo right when I graduated high school, but, like, uh, I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't 18, or I had just turned 18. It was a thing. I didn't end up getting one. But I even had a friend of mine design a tattoo once that was like a golden snitch with its wings spread out, like tribal style. 
and I never ended up getting that either. And I'm kind of glad about that because I'm not like super obsessed with Harry Potter anymore. Something like a vegetable is kind of artistic though, and I'm always going to eat them. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like that would be a better investment. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. Uh, so today is the very first like technical episode for the show. Um, so that's why I titled it Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, the theme for the show is tofu. Um, Duck says he saw artichokes at Walmart and thought of y'all. Yeah, artichokes are great. <laughs> Could get an artichoke tattoo. That would be really pretty. Did you know that artichokes are a type of thistle? And that if you keep letting them grow, a flower comes out of the top of it? It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway. So... <laughs> The tofu episode, the infamous tofu episode, I wanted to do first, even though I recorded it as the second video I made, which we'll get to in the video portion. Um, but I basically wanted to get the tofu out of the way because everybody always asks people who don't eat meat, do you only eat tofu all the time? Which is obviously not something that happens, but um, we eat tofu a lot because we actually like it. It's not a requirement for you to eat tofu if you don't eat meat. Um, and because we had talked about soy a little bit in another episode of the show, I just wanted to touch on that too. Um, so when you're thinking about foods that you're eating, some of them have obvious health benefits, like eating a lot of leafy greens will get you a lot of vitamins and iron. But your protein sources are pretty much just protein sources. So soy, for instance, contains protein and calcium, but that's really what you're looking at when you consume soy. They've done studies that show it, it does have some protective effects, um, but it's not like one of those foods that you eat specifically because it has health benefits, um, like a leafy green vegetable. So it's just a low fat protein um, which is the kind of protein that you want. You want lean proteins, and tofu is like the vegetarian equivalent of the, like, the leanest protein that you can get, aside from beans. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, it's very versatile, and you can use it in pretty much any type of cuisine. They make it in a number of different textures, and they even have some you can buy that are already flavored, like they're marinated, um, grilled. So in this episode, we're only using the regular extra firm tofu that you can get at the store. Um, the, t the type that you have to get from the refrigerator. There are also shelf stable kinds that you can use to make desserts and things. Um, but we'll get to that in the, the protein snacks desserts video. Cable says, I usually eat it in stir fries or soups, mostly because it's a pain to find here and I suck at cooking. Yeah, I think a lot of people are most familiar with it um, as uh, something in Chinese or Japanese food, and the, the those two cultures don't really like use it as an ingredient to make other things. It's just something they add to stuff. So like stir fry is a great example of that. Um, when we were at Wagamama for the Standing Stone Games meetup. My dish had tofu in it, and it was basically just put on top of everything. So that's pretty much how they serve it. So Americans um, and Europeans who are vegan have taken tofu, and they've used it to create other dishes. So like what we're going to do today with the tofu, tofu scramble, that's that's the, the Western um, usage of tofu for the most part. We don't really like to eat it by itself because it doesn't taste like overwhelmingly as something. It's just kind of sour. It doesn't have a whole lot of complexity to it. Zeus says, question, how well does tofu store once opened and does it break, begin to break down like cream cheese does? Like get the milk stuff under it. Yes, yes it does. So when I first started eating tofu, I didn't use the whole thing. So yeah, I would have some leftover like it sounds like you're describing. So the ideal way to preserve anything that you have left over, any tofu that you have left over, is to keep it the same way that you bought it. So if it's brined, brine it. So basically what you're going to do is take anything, any that you have left, and put it in a container, cover it with water, and keep it sealed. 
and then every day or day and a half, maybe two days, you want to rinse the water off or dump the water off and rinse it and then put the water back on. And that's the best way to keep it for a long period of time. Uh, that being said, if you don't uh, have extra, you don't need to worry about that. So all of the recipes that I'm going to show you today, you won't have extra tofu. You just use the whole thing um, in the items that we're cooking. So, uh, that's it for my initial explanation. We're going to make three recipes. Um, tofu scramble, which is kind of like an egg dish. Uh, stir fry that has tofu in it. And then uh, lasagna that uses tofu in place of ricotta cheese. So does anybody have any more questions before we start to the, uh, the video? I'll just sip some more of this kombucha. Yes, no, yes, no questions, maybe. All right, well, if you have questions, I'm still gonna be in the chat, which I'm looking at very intently <laughs> on the screen. So uh, chime in and I'll paste the, the verbiage that I have about the show. Uh, I ran out of time yesterday and I didn't have the page actually prepared for uh, today. So none of the recipes are online yet. But they will be, um, hopefully by the time the recipe, I mean the video exports and I publish the page and all that good stuff. So, uh, check the main blog page. It'll be up at the top. And then in the YouTube notes, I'll have a link directly to the post. So if and when you need to go back to it, um, you can just link up right away from there. So I'm going to start the video and we're going to hang out and don't hesitate with any questions. And then when we're done, uh, the runtime is about an hour. If you have any more questions. I'll come back on and I'll talk to you some more. Duck says apparently Aldi sells tofu under their Asian food brand. I'll have to find out if it's limited time or always available. I don't remember seeing any in our Aldi. But yeah, Aldi's great. I used to shop there all the time before I got a, a wicked awesome discount at the store that I work at. So um, yeah, so I'm going to play the video and I'll be here and uh, enjoy. Hello, and welcome to a very exciting edition of the Clem Can Cook Show. So today's episode, episode number one, is all about tofu, which you might have seen. It's this weird white spongy stuff. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to start the show off with tofu because everybody thinks that that's all you eat when you don't eat meat. So I just thought, just rip the band-aid off, let's get it over with. So I'm going to make three dishes using tofu as the main ingredient and they're all delicious and you should all, you should try each of them and uh, they're really easy to make too. So the first thing that we're going to do is make tofu scramble and tofu scramble is like scrambled eggs but it's made out of tofu um, and this magical stuff called nutritional yeast which kind of tastes like cheese but it's not it's yellowy and flaky it's full of B vitamins and it just tastes good so the first thing I'm going to do to make the tofu scramble and this recipe I developed so you don't have to do pretty much anything to it. You just get your pan out, you oil it a little bit, and when I mean a little bit, I mean a little. You don't have to use practically any oil. Just to get it on the bottom here. And then you're going to take two blocks of tofu with that have had the water drained off of them and have been pressed. And I'll show you that in a minute. But you're just going to crumble them into little pieces. They don't have to be, you know, super small or whatever, but... It's 
So tofu by itself just doesn't really have much of a flavor. It's got like tofu flavor, it's kind of sour, it's a little bland, but that's one of the things, one of the reasons why it makes it such a great ingredient to cook with, because the flavor isn't overwhelming, you can use it in all kinds of dishes. So a lot of people are more familiar with it in Asian cooking, but this, for instance, is, you know, kind of like a, an American-inspired dish. You can also use it in smoothies and to make desserts, like pudding, um, which I'll have an episode on protein, um, high-protein desserts and snacks later on, where I'll show you how to make my pumpkin pie. It's a tofu pumpkin pie, and it's really, really good. So, when you got all that broken up, you basically just put all your spices in there and you stir it up. What you can do, actually, to make it a little bit more, um, a little easier to mix, you can put the ingredients or the spices, the dry spices, in a bowl first. So we can go ahead and do that here. So, get all my measuring spoons out. Okay, so for your spices, first thing you want is a half a cup of nutritional yeast. And that is, it sounds like a lot, uh, but if you're making a single batch, this is technically like a double batch of tofu scramble. A single batch, you would only need a quarter of a cup. But because we got a double batch here, you want to do half a cup. So then we want garlic powder and onion powder, a tablespoon of each. Again, sounds like a lot, but it's not. Where's my onion powder? There we go. Okay, garlic powder, one tablespoon. One of the reasons why I like this recipe so much is because you can basically get it all together and make it in advance for something. So like, one of the things that we like to do with the tofu scramble is to have breakfast tacos. So all you need to do is get the tofu scramble ready. You can have your vegan cheese. You can make uh, home fries or hash browns to go with it. And it's uh, high in protein, it's really delicious. Okay, so, need a teaspoon of turmeric. Try to clean up after myself as I go. Just a quarter teaspoon of curry powder. And you can use any kind, but yellow is the kind I use. It has a smoother flavor. I like it more. I'm gonna do a couple shakes of red pepper flakes. teaspoons of salt. Again, sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Okay. Two teaspoons of cumin, and then two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So as I've mentioned before, um, a lot of the things that I cook on the show, 
This is basically like my batch cooking day. Well, I mean, as I mentioned before. So, secret, <laughs> I've already filmed a couple episodes, but this is episode number one. So, you should know. Part of the reason that I'm doing this is so that I can cook a bunch of food for us to eat during the week ahead of time. So this is like batch cooking day. So, um, one of the reasons why this is great is because it makes a lot of servings. You can do breakfast tacos with it, you can put it in a wrap, you can eat it by itself with some potatoes. So what I'm doing today is this is going to be our dinner, and then we're going to use it during the week for our leftovers. So tonight I'm going to do it scrambled egg style. I'm going to make some some hash browns to go with it, um, and then maybe have some green vegetables on top. I haven't really decided yet. But I'm going to show you how to do um, the hash browns, home fries. Uh, home fries, not hash browns. Um, in my cast iron skillet because I love that so much. And I'm trying to convince everybody that they really should be using it instead of nonstick. Because nonstick is a nightmare, which you will come to find out when I make lentil burgers in the lentil episode of the show. So, now that have all my spices. I'm just going to mix it together really well. Okay. So you do need some liquid to mix everything together. Hey, let's go. So I'm going to use homemade vegetable broth. Just a few tablespoons. We'll use three. Another reason why I developed this recipe was so that it would be virtually oil free. It's not completely oil free because I oiled the pan, but it is significantly less, which makes it lower in fat, um, better on your cardiovascular system, all that good stuff. Hey Rusty, you hoping I uh, drop some of this nutritional yeast on the floor? Well, I just might. Give it a good mix here. In case any of you, any of you are wondering, popcorn tofu, like on the shirt here, is an actual thing. <laughs> um, if you're ever in Austin, you go to a store called Wheatsville. They make it there and it's the best way you could eat tofu ever. It's breaded and they even have a, a buffalo flavored one like buffalo sauce and they put it on pizzas. The buffalo tofu, buffalo popcorn tofu pizza is literally the best thing on the planet. So now that you've got your scramble all mixed up you just put it in an oven. Oh look there's Rusty. <laughs> Hi, Rusty. Oh my God. Stream bomb. <laughs> okay, so you put it in a 400 degree oven for half an hour, and you don't even have to mix it or anything. So now that we've got that all set, I'm going to move on to my next dish. I'm going to show you how to make my um, stir fry. And this one is really easy, too. We're gonna do is we're gonna get everything chopped ahead of time because you cook it all at once. So I always start with a head of broccoli, like a medium-sized head. This is kind of on the smaller side for me, but it'll be great. And Rusty loves broccoli. So um, if you have one that's about this big, you want to cut it in half. 
I recommend only cutting the stem and then tearing the part on top apart so you don't get little leaves all over the place. Because if you do this, watch what happens. You get this stuff on the bottom and then it's like you're wasting the broccoli. Nobody wants that. It works so much better if you do it the other way. We got to make sure we get Rusty his piece of broccoli. Can you go sit? Come here. Come here. Stay. You're not staying. Come here. <laughs> sit. Here you go. <laughs> He's a good boy. He eats his vegetables. So I'm also going to do this bell pepper here. Just cut the top off, peel the pith out, knock the seeds out. Chop. And you want like good sized squares, but not squares that are too big. And then I also usually cut the top too. Because it's just as tasty. So now I've got this cabbage and I'm going to use half of the cabbage. So what we're going to do is kind of cut it in half. And this is the smaller side, so I'm gonna use the smaller side. So we might not need all of it. And you can kind of just judge that based on how much it fills the pan up when we put it in there. So cabbage, you want it to be on the thin side, otherwise it's still gonna be really hard and spicy when you go to eat it. So what we're gonna do is very carefully kind of cut it into matchsticks and then as thin as possible. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to use all this, I'm going to kind of keep it off to the side in the bowl. And then kind of scoop all the other stuff in there first and then just see what it looks like. Okay, so we got that. I want to do this can of water chestnuts too. These are my favorite. You always want to make sure, well, this is, I guess, personal preference, but I always make sure I have some of the, one of these canned veggies in here. So like water chestnuts or bamboo shoots, it just gives it a, a more different texture um, than just your veggies and your tofu. Okay, so the only other things I'm gonna put in there are these matchstick carrots. And the tofu. So I'm just gonna cut the tofu. Actually, I lied. I still have garlic and onions to put in, but I usually wait to do those until everything else is ready. Because I'm gonna cook those for a couple minutes before everything else. So this is what I was talking about with the tofu press. You can get them on Amazon. It's about 15 to 20 dollars, I don't remember. But um, it basically will drain all the water out of the tofu for you and it improves the texture and shortens the cooking time. So let's say you don't have one of these and you're basically going to take this out of the container and put your tofu in your stir fry. Well, what I would recommend is draining all the water off and then giving it some squeezes over your sink 
to try to get as much water out as possible. Then put this on a plate, put another plate on top, and then put something heavy on that plate. And it'll kind of squeeze more of it out of there. And I would suggest doing this about 20 minutes prior to when you're gonna wanna use it. If you have an actual tofu press, all you need is about 10 minutes and it'll get pretty much all the water out of there. See how it's, it's not dripping or anything? That's the kind of texture you want. So basically what I did was that I cut this block of tofu in half lengthwise and now I'm just gonna make cubes out of it. So they're bite sized. And I am gonna put all of this in here You don't have to use the whole block of tofu if you don't want to. And they don't have to be perfect either. Okay, so we got this huge bowl of vegetables and protein. So I'm gonna scrape this stuff. I think Rusty wants some more broccoli, so we're gonna give him some more. He won't eat it if it has all these leaves on it. He only likes the inside. So picky. Here you go. Take it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna run over real quick and get rid of all this so that I can chop my onion and my garlic. while we're doing that. I'm gonna put it on medium high. So on my stove, it's the medium and one tick above that. That's what I'm putting it on. And I'm just gonna put some canola oil in this pan. Now this is a big pan. Let me see if it has a measurement on the bottom of it. No. It's a big frying pan. It's not a, it's not an eight inch pan. So maybe it's a 10 or a 12 inch. So I'm just going to put some oil in there. I might have put two tablespoons. I don't usually put that much, but if you're trying to avoid oil, which is perfectly reasonable, um, you don't have to use the oil, um, but I wouldn't recommend cooking it on medium high heat. I would just do medium low or medium, um, but you might know your pan better. So if you feel like it'll work just fine, you can try it that way. You could also try the um, cast iron skillet, but I haven't done stir fry in there, so I don't know how well it's gonna turn out. So, peel your garlic. Just kind of loosen the skin up and peel it off. Don't try cutting it because then it'll get garlic juice all over the place and it'll stick to your fingers when you try to take it apart even worse than it does when you don't. So I've got four cloves of garlic here. You can use garlic or onions or both. I usually use both because it tastes better that way. But if you don't want to go through all the effort of doing both, you don't have to. But I would definitely recommend having at least one because they add so much flavor. Come on now. Okay. Okay. So just, if you have a, a mincer, you can use a mincer or you can just use a knife like I do. My mincer is still dirty because I'm lazy and I always forget to give it a good scrub. So I'm just going to make nice little slices here. It smells of tofu scrambled baking in the oven and it smells amazing. Too bad smell vision isn't a thing yet. I am friends with someone in Los Angeles who posts movie reviews. She says she goes to see them in 4D and I'm not really sure if she's serious or not. 
or what that really entails. Okay, so I'm going to put this garlic in here. I'm going to grab my onion, which I've refrigerated. And refrigerating sometimes takes the cut off of your onion. But I also recommend breathing out of your mouth instead of your nose to minimize that. So when you do this particular, I don't know if like everybody does this with stir fry, but you don't need to like, oh, don't eat that. That's some garlic on the floor, how do I do that? Okay, so stir fry. When you're cooking your garlic and your onions, you don't need to do like an Italian cooking where you caramelize it, at least in stir fry. So you just wanna soften it up a little bit before you add everything else. gonna start adding stuff here. I use half of it, but did use a lot. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball the carrot situation. Okay. So I'm gonna let these cook for a few minutes before stirring them. going to show you how to make a stir fry sauce and that's really is the secret to making good Chinese food um, is the sauce so this recipe here one second so this recipe that I made is kind of inspired by like what they refer to as a brown sauce um, in Chinese cooking, but it's basically like good for everything. So if you're ever going to make this at home, which I really encourage you to do, you don't need to use the exact veggies that I use in here. So basically what you're trying to do is fill a pan this size with your vegetables, you cook them, and then you're going to put the sauce on top and just kind of keep stirring it until it's thickened up. So today I've used the broccoli, carrots, tofu, cabbage, pepper. Um, so what I would recommend, if you want to switch things up, I really feel like the broccoli and the pepper are essential to the recipe. So definitely keep those. But instead of the cabbage, you could use like baby bok choy, you could use Napa cabbage, you could use um, a savoy cabbage would be a good one too. Anything that's kind of um, in the Asian vegetable family, you could use instead of the cabbage. Um, like I said, bamboo shoots instead of the water chestnuts would be fine. Um, you could use 
um, sliced carrot if it's really thin instead of the matchsticks. But um, yeah, I mean, you could even just use all cabbage and it would be so good. You could use some fake meat if you wanted to. You could use this sauce on pretty much whatever you want and it'll be delicious. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. So you're gonna use a tablespoon of <laughs> rice vinegar. I couldn't remember for a second. And then you're gonna use three tablespoons of this stuff, just called liquid aminos. It's basically a, it's like a soy sauce, but it's a little different. I feel like it's, it's saltier, but it's lower in sodium. I don't know how that works. But three tablespoons of this stuff. definitely be conscious of is making sure that your broccoli is towards the bottom of the pan so that it cooks all the way through. Broccoli can be one of those those veggies that is really spicy when it's raw and you don't really want that when you're expecting a nice high heat stir fry meal. So okay um, so we got those two you're gonna want um, powdered ginger, a quarter teaspoon, and it's okay if it's like a heaping quarter teaspoon, that's fine. Again, a few shakes of the red pepper flakes. And sometimes red pepper flakes, these ones I got at Aldi, they're not very spicy. So if you have some that isn't very flavorful, you're gonna need to add more. But definitely go on, on the easy side first if you're not really sure about it, just in case. Especially if you have a low spice tolerance like I do. Okay, so then I need two teaspoons of cornstarch. And the cornstarch is the magical ingredient that the Chinese Chinese chefs use to make their their really sticky sauces. So if you want to make this recipe without the cornstarch, it's gonna fail. It just really is. It's just gonna be watery and soupy, and you're not gonna like it. So please don't try to change it. <laughs> I'm not saying it out of pride. I'm saying it out of how I want you to be happy with what you're eating. Okay. Hi. I don't have any more broccoli. Um, so next you want two teaspoons of any type of oil. I use canola oil in stir fries because it's higher heat and it's less likely to burn. It has a higher smoke point, uh, is what I'm trying to say. So the canola oil is less likely to give you issues when you put it in the pan. So I also used that when I put it in here. And then you do want a teaspoon of liquid sweetener. I've used coconut nectar before, but I prefer the agave. So I really recommend that you use agave for this. Don't use maple syrup, that would be weird. Okay. Yep, that's everything. So we just need to add some water. And typically I use a quarter teaspoon or a quarter cup of water, but I'm gonna use a third today because there are a lot of veggies. And then you're just gonna whisk it together and it'll be ready for when your veggies are done. So 
So I don't know if you have one of those pans that has a hot spot. See here? This pan, everything burns on this side. So what I'm going to do is try to move things around so that they, they kind of cook more evenly elsewhere. But do you see how this tofu is getting miraculous? Yeah. And this broccoli too. So we're just going to let it brown a little bit more. And then we're going to do the sauce. And hopefully at this distance you'll be able to see how it goes from liquid to a, a nice sticky syrupy sauce. So, just a couple minutes. I'm going to tidy a few things up and we're going to get ready for our last recipe. But I'm going to do a fun thing and plate this one up so you can see what it would look like while you're eating it. We're almost ready for our sauce. In fact, we are so ready for our sauce. So what I'm going to do is turn the heat down to medium low. So on my stove that's two ticks below medium, I'm going to stir it one more time to kind of release the heat a little bit. I'm going to set it off of the heat for just a sec, pour this stuff over it, see how watery that was? And then we're going to bring it over here and keep stirring until it becomes a nice thick sauce. Which only takes a couple minutes. So yeah, uh, if you can see here, there's pretty much no watery substance left in the pan. So you can go ahead and turn the heat off, remove it, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you go eat it. Oh, it's so great. awesome, fun, delicious stir fry. You can eat it with rice here, like this right here, just plain brown rice. You can use rice noodles, you could use uh, soap noodles, you could use riced cauliflower if you're one of those people who doesn't like to eat grains. Or you could just eat this. Yeah, I try to be one of those people who doesn't eat grains. And this is delicious just by itself. Okay, so I'm going to do a little cleaning up. I'm going to put all this stuff in some containers for the week because, like I said, I'm bulk cooking. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to make a lasagna using tofu in place of ricotta cheese. But don't worry, there's still some vegan cheese in it. <laughs> I know you were so worried. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so like I said, the last tofu recipe I'm gonna show you how to make is for lasagna. 
and it's basically like a no recipe recipe so I've got my lasagna noodles all boiled up over here it's a uh, gluten-free pasta so like all the little nubbins kind of started falling off so that's not fun but I got my noodles cooked and I'm basically just gonna cook some vegetables a little bit before putting them in uh, the pan with everything else so I've got a zucchini and a broccoli and a red pepper and I'm just gonna put everything together real quick so with the broccoli this time I'm gonna go ahead and and cut it up teeny tiny it would help if I put a little olive oil in the pan so I'm just reusing the pan that I used to cook pasta noodles in because you don't have to be like super super clean about it if you just use it okay so roughly chop your broccoli out of the zucchini but since it's going into a lasagna you do want to have it be like bite-sized pieces so you're just gonna have like not too thin slices but not too thick either so I'm cutting it into thirds and then doing like quarter inch slices zucchini so we'll get him some zucchini too. Here you go burger butt. <laughs> and I think I'm just gonna do half of the zucchini today because I'm just making an 8 by 8 inch lasagna. I'm not making a full full one because we're only two people and I really don't have enough room in my refrigerator for a ton of stuff. So with the red pepper, I'm actually going to try to cut it as small as possible. So real thin slices and then a real small dice. When you're cutting vegetables, make sure that you're not leaving your fingers out. Use your fingernails to protect you. Oops! Did you get it? Okay. Hello. That's a little big. <laughs> so is that. You know what, I am going to do the rest of this zucchini. Now, 
Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to finish cooking this. I'm going to turn the heat off and just let it sit there for a little bit. So for the tofu, tofu, I have it already kind of roughly crumbled up. I'm going to add a half an ounce of fresh basil. you want to try to make them dry so I'm just gonna like squeeze off the excess water here it just makes it a lot easier to cut them especially if what you're going for is like a really fine chiffonade if you will I'm really not fabulous at cutting herbs so I'm gonna do the best that I can so with basil you do not want these really hard stem parts you just want the leaves if you're using parsley or cilantro in something you can totally use the stems on those because they're they're not hard like this here you can't even like it's hard to even break apart okay so i'm just kind of gonna try to like you're what you're supposed to do is roll this up in a ball and like <laughs> Go through it really thin like. So this is what I usually do to start. And then I go back and I just kind of rough it up. So if you're going to do something stupid like this, Make sure your fingers are nowhere near the blade, okay? And then you're just gonna put that in with the tofu. Cause you really don't wanna like cook the basil to pieces. So you're gonna have different layers and different flavor profiles. So if I had put the basil in with this stuff and I put the tofu in with that stuff, it would all taste the same, you know, no matter what you bit into. So with this, if you, bit, if you bite into a piece of broccoli, it's just gonna taste like broccoli. And then if you bite into some of the tofu stuff, it's gonna taste like this delicious tofu stuff. So it's really a good idea to keep them separate. Okay, so I need some white vinegar or white wine vinegar, excuse me. The white wine vinegar is going to kind of give the tofu a, a cheesiness to it without being cheesy. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of that and I'm also going to do a tablespoon of the nutritional yeast. And then I'm going to mash it all together with a fork. And uh, I don't have a recipe, I'm just making this stuff up. So hopefully it'll be delicious. And I've actually decided, since we started talking about this, that this is going to be my dinner because it's actually five o'clock um, and I've got a lot of other stuff I need to do. So I'll show you when we're done with this. I'll show you what the tofu scramble looked like, which you can see it. <laughs> over here there we go um but i'll give you a nice close-up of it and stuff okay so we've got that and i'm just gonna mash it together with a fork if i can get to a fork you know 
Oh no. You guys don't know, but there's a table set up. There's a table set up in front of my dishwasher with the uh, the laptop and one of the webcams and things. So it's a little a little improvised. Much like the food that I'm making for you today. So I guess now, since we're talking about improvising food, would be a good time to share with you. I have no culinary training. I've been a vegetarian off and on since 1998. Um, so it'll have been 20 years in April since I went vegetarian. And I say that like that because uh, like but pretty much everybody, I've had my, my cheat days. I have occasionally indulged in seafood. Um, and when I first went vegetarian, I went vegan, but then I kind of fell off the bandwagon after I got really close to having an eating disorder. And that's not really something that is like, like life threatening. So I don't really talk about it like that, but I had an unhealthy relationship with food and I'm not blaming being vegan on that, but when you don't know how to feed yourself, you kind of have to take it easy on yourself. So one of, one of the things that I'm trying, sorry, cat hair. I don't know if you have cats, but geez Louise. Gets stuck to you everywhere. Okay. So one of the things that I'm trying to share with you guys is um, how to make healthy food, but to not freak out about it, okay? So part of my nutrition training is to emphasize adding things to your diet that are good for you but not depending on restriction in order to be healthy. So like, if you cut out everything that's bad for you, you really don't have anything left to enjoy other than vegetables. And like, that's not a world that I want to live in. It's okay to eat things that have fat in them that are refined carbs, but you have to make the, pro the, the majority of your diet lean protein, low fat, um, full of complex carbohydrates and complex sugars. So you should be eating mostly vegetables, whole grains, legumes, fruits, and nuts. And you can have the other stuff. It's okay. But when I say majority, I mean like the most of what you're eating. Most of it. Um, but I digress. Okay, so we've got bottled sauce. Newman Saccharini, I highly recommend. Don't tell MVP, but it has some mushrooms in it. She actually loves this sauce. And I'm not sure if it always had mushrooms in it. Come to think of it, it probably didn't, but it does now. So I don't know if you've made a lasagna before, but one of the things you wanna do is put some sauce at the bottom to keep the noodles from sticking. So that's step number one. So because I'm just making a little lasagna for two people, I did make all the noodles because why am I gonna go back and make like four pieces of noodles? So you can just break the pieces apart so they fit. Totally fine. So do the side and then do the middle. So now we're going to do a little more sauce. Oops. Not oops for you, Rusty. Don't come. Somehow Rusty learned that oops means that something fell on the floor and he can eat it. So you kind of have to be careful of what you say around him. Because he'll think that it's, it's something it's not. That pasta stuck to me. So I don't really remember, let me check this box here. I don't remember the layering in which you're supposed to do, cause I don't make lasagna very often. I got to tell you guys, most of the time I don't do recipes that have multiple steps. Okay. Tomatoes, noodles, tomatoes.
mozzarella. Man, this doesn't have any vegetables in it. You guys fail. All right, so. I think I'm gonna do cheese and then veggies. So we're gonna do this funky vegan cheese first. And one thing I should mention about vegan cheese is that it still has a lot of fat in it. Don't walk around thinking to yourself that this stuff is healthy because it's not. That being said, if all you eat all day is vegetables, it's okay to have something that's high in fat because where the hell are you gonna get your calories from? Okay, we got that. We're gonna spoon some of this in here. I'm not gonna worry about skimping on it because there will probably be extra. these veggies. Hey buddy. I don't know if you guys know this, but Rusty is like really spoiled and he thinks that all of this stuff I do in the kitchen all the time is mainly for him. Which is funny because he gets dog food and he gets raw vegetables and that's pretty much it. I don't sit around and give him people food all day, so I don't know where he gets this idea from. Okay, so I'm going to be kind of a risk taker here and do the other noodles in the opposite direction. And we'll see how that goes. This is another, this right here, what I'm doing is a great way to make enchiladas too. I don't know if you guys have ever made a small batch of enchiladas, but uh... Yeah, you just kind of tuck your tortillas in here and you cook those and then if you have left over you can make the rest of the enchiladas and then put this in the freezer and then when you want to make them you just put it in the oven and it's super fast and easy. So I just followed the instructions for traditional boiled pasta uh, lasagna on the package for these so that's what I would recommend you do if you use another type of noodle so I use gluten-free noodles because I might have celiac disease and I say might because my doctor told me that um, even if you test negative on it you could still be positive it's one of those things where the best way they have to determine whether or not you have it is to like go inside your intestines and I was like, you know what, I'm just not gonna. <laughs> so that's my story. Um, but yeah, if you do not have celiac disease, by all means, eat wheat noodles. They're much better. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. They're much more delicious. And easier to work with. gonna squish it down a little bit. I don't know if you've ever had this problem but sometimes my lasagna overflows because I stuff it so full of stuff. So I'm gonna when I'm done I'm gonna put it on this baking sheet before I put it in the oven so that way if that happens um, it has something to catch all the gooey liquids. I'm so glad now that I didn't use all of the zucchini because then it wouldn't have been able to fit. If you're new to 
cooking, you're going to have a lot of failures. I'm just going to let you know. And the more you do it, the more you kind of get a sense of size and ratio, proportions. So I can't recommend practicing enough. Like, experiment with your food. I think we're going this way again. I don't know. But yeah, so cooking is hard. And being healthy is hard. And the whole reason that we're here is to try to figure out a way to make being healthy suck less. And I can tell you that lasagna makes being healthy suck a lot less. For sure. So we're almost done. And I have all these extra noodles. And you know what? You know what you can do with extra noodles? <laughs> you put them in your mouth. Okay. So we're just going to put some a little more sauce. Alright, the rest of the sauce. And that's going to keep our noodles from drying out on the top. Okay, now with traditional lasagna, they tell you to wait to put the rest of the cheese on it until it's almost done, but I'm going to do it right now. And the reason for that is that vegan cheese takes longer to melt than conventional cheese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot. See? Is it's really full. <laughs> so we're just going to slide these noodles off here. Put this in the oven. The oven is set to 400 degrees. Again, uh, that is because vegan cheese is more difficult to work with than conventional. And it needs a higher temperature to really, really melt. So we're going to put this in here. And we're going to bake it for 45 minutes and see if it's ready. Alexa, set the timer for 45 minutes. any noodles. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what the tofu scramble looks like. It is a little overbaked because I got distracted talking to you guys. But you see how it got all nice and yellow and it's really delicious and like I said you can use it you can use it as an egg substitute <laughs> I'm bending over on screen well, that's not appropriate let's not do that okay anyway so I'm gonna pack all this stuff up we're gonna let the lasagna bake for 45 minutes and then I'm going to make more asparagus to go on the side. I'm going to plate the lasagna up. And I'm going to show you how beautiful it is. And then we're done. And we've made all this food in a short amount of time. And it's high in protein. And it tastes really good. And it's also pretty good for you. So I'll be back. So the timer just went off. I've done a considerable amount of cleaning up. And 
that looks exquisite. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is set the lasagna by itself. Because I don't know if you noticed this, but when pans expand and contract in the heat and popping occurs and yeah, we don't want anything to happen to our beloved lasagna. All right, so it's going to be super hot. I'm going to let it sit for about 20 minutes before I dig into it. And I've actually changed my mind again since it's so late. I'm not going to cook anything else. I'm just going to have lasagna and a side salad. So when this is cooled off for a little bit, I'm going to cut it open and plate it and you'll be able to see how awesome it looks with the tofu ricotta stuff in the middle. Alright everybody, so I let my lasagna cool off a little bit. I've got myself a nice little side salad here and I'm just gonna cut this lasagna up and hopefully transport it, transfer it to my plate well enough that I don't spill it all over the place. We'll see what happens. So lasagna. No, you don't get any. edges got a little crispy, but that's all right. Okay, let's see how this goes. Should probably have a fork too. <laughs> I'll try not to bump the table this time. <laughs> oh well. I don't need your help, dog. I didn't do anything. There's nothing here for you to concern yourself with. Yeah, I did a horrible job doing that. <laughs> it's always the first, the first one you take off of the thing. It gets everywhere. All right, let's try to do it with the second one so that it doesn't look like a big blob. side scoop too. Okay. So you can see it's very lasagna-y. Get a piece of the tofu out here so you can take a look at it. See? Now I get to try some. Here you can use this 
fork. Oh, legs. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go eat this now, and then we'll wrap up, and I will see you next time in the kitchen. Woo! And that's that. <laughs> so... You guys have any uh, any follow up questions to your to your uh, to the recipes that I made? It seems like you guys uh, really liked liked them, from what I could tell in the chat. It's always nice to hear all of the wonderful things that people say. I hope you actually try some. You're welcome for the recipes, cables. They're really good. Thank you, Zeus. Is everything okay in Gussie's channel? Well, you can't steal the lasagna, Zeus, because it's already gone. I filmed this in February. <laughs> Still on high alert. Well, that's a shame. I don't understand people sometimes. Lee says she needs that stir fry in her life. I just made some the other day. It's it's one of those recipes that I make on almost a weekly basis. Um, and like I said in the chat, you can swap the tofu out for all different kinds of stuff. So like, usually a container of tofu is about a pound's worth. So if you're thinking about subbing it for something else, just kind of use like a pound's worth of whatever protein that you want. Um, so like I said in the chat, uh, tempeh, which is another soy food, it's fermented, it kind of kind of tastes funky if you're not used to it, um, but that's really good in there. And then uh, edamame, like um, shelled edamame, it's a soybean, fresh, um, those are really good. I usually use like one, one cup or one and a half cups for those. Um, but then you can use like cooked meat if you want to do that, or like cooked fake meat, so like they have fake chicken and stuff, that would be really good too. Just punks hanging out and getting their butts kicked, yeah! <laughs> I guess they're good for something, right? Kicking their butts. <laughs> Zeus wants to know, what would you recommend subbing the red pepper for in lasagna? My mom claims that pepper takes over everything. Well, I didn't really feel like I tasted it in this one. But, um, let's see, sub for pepper. Got broccoli in the zucchini. I don't know, man, I put pepper in everything. Um, carrots? I mean, that'll make it taste more like carrots, but you could use a couple carrots. Maybe thin slice or a rough chop. Cable says, maybe on payday I'll make stuffed pepper since it's been a while. Green peppers, red, yellow might be stronger. Yeah, that's true. Lee says, with carrots, quinoa, avocado, and lettuce with falafel. Mmm, we used to put edamame in one of your wraps. Yeah, yummy. Zeus says, I might add squash to it, maybe onion, or would that overpower? So I feel like the combination of onion with the other veggies won't necessarily overpower. It would add to it. Uh, eggplant, yep, Lee recommends eggplant would work really well. So if you want to do um, a zucchini, you could also do a summer squash. You could do that. Um, or you could do green beans. You could try that. Just finely chopped green beans. Yeah, eggplant. Mm -hmm. I think eggplant would be a good choice. Silly mini corn things. You mean um, in stir fry? Because <laughs> I'm not sure how those would go in a lasagna. <laughs> or snow peas, nom nom nom. Yeah. <laughs> um, now nah, the corns would be a weird textural thing. Yeah. Lee says, it has been such a long time since I've talked about food like this. I'm totally nerding out right now. Food is good. So I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I do work. <laughs> I work at a grocery store. 
um, and I deal with a lot of food and customers wanting to know how to make things or looking for something that we don't have um, and having to come up with an alternative to what they use. So um, I always talk about food. One of the reasons why I like working there is because I, because of that. So Lee, you've missed three weeks of nerding. Yeah. Well, this is the first like actual food episode. Um, the episode before was kind of like all talking. Um, and the episode before that was a kombucha demo, which isn't food, it's just kind of like a really specific niche thing. But, so next week we're gonna do um, a whole episode on uh, using lentils as your protein source. So the recipes that are gonna be in that episode, let me make sure I remember everything correctly. Um, lentil burger patties, lentil loaf, and lentil meat sauce. Um, so basically, in the next episode, I'm going to be taking a bunch of pre-cooked lentils um, that I cooked myself. You can find lentils canned or in bags if you wanted to use those instead. But basically, I take those lentils and I turn them into lentil burgers, like veggie burgers, um, a lentil loaf, which is like a meatloaf, and then a lentil meat sauce, which is kind of like like a, a spicier tomato sauce and it uses lentils to kind of protein it up. Um, all of them were really delicious and uh, I think MVP makes another cameo in this next one because she can't contain her excitement for how great the food is. So Lee says, I'm trying to introduce my housemates to some Latvian food. They have no idea what a lot of it is since, hey, they are Brits. I don't even know what Latvian food is like. I'm mainly familiar with like typical American food, Mexican, Tex-Mex, and Chinese food. I have limited experience with Japanese food, um, Indian food, and what's the other thing? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Lentils are awesome, Lee. They're extremely versatile and they're easy to cook and they're very high in protein. They're probably higher in protein than tofu is. So uh, once we talk about how many different ways you can use them in recipes, you might have a little bit more confidence using them yourself in a creative way. Actually, Zeus, Zeus says, can we get a couple nationality themed episodes like American classics, Briti British classes, and French? Um, actually, so the first season, is structured to be all about plant-based proteins so it's going to be six episodes that are all protein heavy um, which kind of means they're they're mainly like um, dinner good for really big meals um, I do have the snacks for, uh, snacks episode planned though so there will be that um, but season two my inspiration was going to be international dishes so like having one episode with Italian themed dishes another with Indian another with Mexican so um, that's the step for season two, so we'll see how how far I prog progress because um, I don't really have a time frame that I'm looking for with those. So, Zeus so says you can't wait for season two. Yeah. <laughs> Lee says I can do Latvian, Russian, a bit of traditional Jewish. That's it, maybe. How many episodes are you planning for each season? So six at the moment, just because I I am not confident. Um, devoting that much time to consistently filming or airing episodes live. Lee says you've done a really good job though, so cool. Thanks. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you guys, uh, the only thing that I've ever wanted in my life was to have a cooking show and I was always waiting for something to happen. Uh, I had a food blog in 2011 to about 2014, maybe 2015, that was fairly popular in Austin. Um, I was part of a big blogging group down there, I spoke at some um, special events about food blogging and time management, management and skills and that sort of thing. I used to have a series of ebooks, um, I never got into videos or anything like that, and um, I idolized people on PBS. PBS. Uh, <laughs> cooking shows and the name Clem Can Cook is even inspired by a show on PBS called Yan Can Cook. 
because that's <laughs> kind of my obsession. Um, actually, since moving to New Hampshire, I've been really disappointed because we can't get PBS over the air and we don't have enough money for cable. So I need to figure that situation out because you can use PBS to watch things on an app, but you, you're not able to see everything. So I used to watch PBS Create uh, channel nonstop. And that's kind of where I learned so much about food and ingredients and gave me a lot of confidence uh, to just get in the kitchen and make stuff up. So if you're food cautious, which it doesn't really sound like any of you guys are in the chat, um, that's really what I would suggest is sitting down on PBS, not any of the other food channels because most of those are kind of like restaurant themed or challenge themed. You're not going to get the educational experience that you would by watching a professional chef create show, uh, dishes and show you how to do it. Lee says I watch Master Chef a lot in Hell's Kitchen. So those are great shows, but I don't feel like they really expose you to technique. So one of the, some of my favorites, um, Twitch Food has all old 90s, 80s, and 90s shows. Does it have Yan Can Cook? I've never seen, uh, I've never really watched it before. Every time that I tune in, it's like uh, Martha Stewart, and that's not really my sort of thing. Martha Stewart has extremely complicated dishes. Um, I'm more of a Lydia Bastianich fan, and um, I really liked Patty's Mexican Table. That's a newer one. Vegan Corner? What's Vegan Corner? Oh, uh, is that a show on PBS? <laughs> Cable's got a boogie off now. Paper straight and exams to study for. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for stopping by, Cables. It's always great to have you in the chat. I love your food expertise. <laughs> Lee says, but if you want to learn zero, Gordon Ramsay does a lot of educational stuff on his personal YouTube. You know, I've actually seen a lot of things people sharing about uh, recipes from him and they do look pretty good yeah so beware of the chat it it's all troll from PBS no but it has vegan corner <laughs> I'm not familiar with vegan corner I've seen a show called vegan mashup on PBS um, and it's kind of like a like a Northwest PBS channel uh, show I backed it on Kickstarter for a little while, and it only had like six episodes. I paid them 50 bucks, and I didn't really feel like it was worth the investment. But it has a lot of famous, like, modern vegan entrepreneurs on it. Um, and I've also watched um, Christina Perello's show, Christina Cooks. That was okay. It's more of the healthier cooking show vein, um, but she's kind of condescending about people's food choices. Um, so it turns me off a little bit. And then the other one that I have seen, but I'm not a super huge fan of, is Jazzy Vegetarian by Leah Th Laura Theodore. She's very entertaining, but she's more like, um, comfort food and funky vegan food. It's not, not really my cup of tea. Sue says they have Cucina Amore. Graham Kerr's Kitchen, A Taste of History. Oh, A Taste of History is fun. Great Chefs, Jacques and Julia. I like Jacques and Julia. I, I prefer Jacques Pepin's show by himself. Um, and then uh, Lady Bastianich. Oops. I don't really remember. It was a long time ago. Who's Walter Stabe? Fast food my way. I like that one. Okay. That's good to know. Apparently, um, there's this, Chris, uh, MVP used to talk about this chef that they used to watch at her house all the time, and she would always say things from his show and expect me to know what she was talking about. I had no idea. Like, she would go, whoo-wee! Uh, and apparently it was the Justin Wilson show, and his estate actually airs his show on Twitch as a separate channel constantly. So if you're ever interested in seeing some uh, Cajun cooking, that's the show to watch. So yeah, on Twitch, the Justin Wilson show. I'm a, sub I'm a, a follower at the moment, but he's really entertaining and he made um, 
an eggplant jambalaya on his show one day and he's like, oh, it's the best thing ever. You don't even miss the sausage and da 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 da. So I appreciate his ability to um, encourage people to eat vegetarian dishes. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun to watch. I love watching cooking shows. Okay, well, uh, it's been about an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes, so if you guys don't have anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, like I said, next week, same time, hopefully, is gonna be uh, season one, episode two, lentil class, where we're gonna make a lentil loaf, lentil burgers, and a lentil meat sauce. And after that, I'm gonna have a miscellaneous dish episode which I have filmed. But after that, maybe we might be streaming it live from the kitchen. We'll see what happens. We did get, um, we did get our money, Chris's money, MVP's money. So we might be buying me a laptop. We haven't really discussed it yet because we have to buy a lot of other stuff. So, but we'll see what happens. And uh, thank you guys for coming. And again, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me and the, um, <sighs> Clum needs a Discord. See, I've thought about it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. And um, I have a Facebook group, and you can find me on Twitter at Clem Can Cook. Just look me up, and I'm there. And yeah, so that's my story. Zeus says it's not hard, just ask MVP. You know, I did ask her and she said we should probably wait a little bit longer before I get to Discord. So that's the story at the moment. But <laughs> I understand that everybody on Twitch has a Discord and that's how you, how we all communicate with one another. So it's, it's a thought. You should harass her about it. And if you want, you can clip this so that she knows that you talked about it and that you're interested, but <laughs> at this point I'm just being a brat about it <laughs> so anyway uh, yeah <laughs> thank you guys for coming and um, I'll see you next week and be sure to check uh, klimcancook.blogspot.com later on so that you can have um, copies of all the recipes and you can watch the video and uh, I'll put some Q&A FAQ about soy foods and tofu on uh, the page as well. So I'll see you guys later next week. Thanks for coming. I hate saying goodbye. I hate saying goodbye. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>